I remember when the Azeris took Nagorno-Karabakh from the Armenians back in 2020. And after that war, we had video footage of war crimes being done by Azeri forces. And there was one video that I saw that still sticks to my mind. And I was at the store today. I was buying uh, some gardening stuff. And it popped up in my head. You know when you see something disturbing, it just never goes away from your memory. It just sticks to your memory. It just doesn't go away. It just It's just lurking about and it can just pop up right? Just pop up randomly. This was one of those things. It's still stuck in my memory. And it was a video of an elderly Armenian man begging for his life as an Azeri soldier was exerting his he, this Aziri soldier was imposing his strength on this elderly man, working to behead him. And this elderly man, he had to have been in his late 70s. Uh, he had to have been, I would say, late 70s or, or early 80s. And you can hear this elderly Armenian man, and this is what made it so traumatizing. You can hear this elderly Armenian man crying as he is fighting with every bit of strength that he has in him to stop this Aziri guy from decapitating him. And just, I remember his cries, and it's the cries that really, really stick to my head. And this Aziri soldier eventually overpowers this man, this elderly man, and you can see the blade beginning to carve through his neck. And it's just, it was horrifying. But nobody cared, right? I mean, some people cared. I cared. But in the international realm, in the, in the realm of NATO... Let's just put it that way. Nobody really cared. Nobody really gave a damn about the war crimes being done by the Aziris because the Aziris are our guys. They are a major ally for NATO. They are an ally that NATO uses as a proxy against the Iranians. And so the Armenians, and this is... It's not complicated, right? This is how it works. The Armenians are allies with the Iranians. The Azeris hate the Armenians. So we use the Azeris to kill the Armenians because we want to weaken an ally of Iran and therefore ultimately an ally of Russia, Russia. And that's how this whole thing works. It doesn't matter if the Aziris uh, are Islamic fundamentalists or if they're horrific racists who, uh, who, who love and revere Adolf Hitler. None of that matters, right? Even the Israelis side with the Aziris against the Armenians. And today I was reading about... Attacks on Armenians in Israel, and I'm surprised that this, well, actually, I'm not surprised, but this is not a major international story, right? This is mainly something that's talked about in Israeli news, uh, like Haaretz, these types of Israeli publications. This is not, this has not become a major story. It's not a story uh, that is gaining tremendous amounts of attention, but there have been an increase in, in attacks on Armenians and attacks against Christians in Israel have increased tremendously this year, especially against ethnic Armenians in Israel. And this morning I was reading about 
how an Armenian priest said that uh, since January of this year, he has been spat on about 90 times. And there was another story that I read today in which a gang of Jewish extremists attacked an Armenian restaurant. And they were hitting uh, the windows with chairs. They were doing all sorts of property destruction. They were throwing chairs and they were screaming, death to Arabs, death to Christians. You see, for many decades, American Christians, specifically really primarily American evangelical Christians, because Catholics sympathize more with the Palestinians than they do with the Israelis, um, have been talking about how we have to support Israel and how the Arabs are the bad guys and the Jews who are against the Arabs are the good guys and all this stuff. And it's not that black and white, all right? It's not that black and white. Uh, yes, they are Palestinians who are very bad people. You have Palestinian terrorists. Absolutely. They have they have been there for decades. They have killed a lot of Israelis. Absolutely. This is a fact. PLO, Hamas, bad people, mafia. Very bad people. Yes, Arafat was a thug. My father was a member of the PLO. I know about the PLO. It's like the IRA of the Middle East. Trust me. I understand. At the same time, you have people who uh, talk about how bad the Arabs are, but they themselves are racist. They themselves are far-right lunatics. And the Jewish extremists who scream death to Arabs will also scream death to Christians. And this is what a lot of evangelical Christians are missing. Now... The whole pro-Israel thing, and this is just a side note, but I need to say this because it definitely connects with this whole subject. Uh, the whole pro-Israel evangelical movement in America is free-falling to its death. It is quickly deteriorating, and every year it gets very, very small because that movement is pretty much limited to boomers some millennials, but mainly boomers and whoever is alive from the older generations. That's primarily it for that movement. Millennials, for the most part, don't give a damn about Israel. And Generation Z, the Zoomers, I don't think they care so much about Israel that much. So the whole pro-Israel evangelical movement thing is pretty much dying out. Um, But with that said... It is the case that for decades we have been hearing about how we have to support Israel and how the Israelis who are against the Arabs are the good guys. And I have seen older evangelical folks ardently support the settlers in Israel. Now, the settlers are a big ideological faction in Israel. These are Jewish people who live within Palestinian territories, and they live within their own gated communities, which are Jewish enclaves, and they are heavily guarded, a lot of people are armed, and uh, these settlements, these Jewish uh, settlements, they are full of extremists. Not all of them, some of them are like hipsters, I've seen some of them, they're like Jewish hippies, but a lot of them are extremists. A lot of them are racist. A lot of them are far-right lunatics. And they will say things like death to Arabs, and they will also say things like death to Christians. So this, this morning, I'm reading this story about Jewish extremists, a whole gang of them, practically doing a riot in an Armenian restaurant in Israel, and they're screaming death to Christians. There was another event that happened Uh, recently, in which a group of young Armenian men were going home from work, and uh, they were driving, and there were two Jewish extremists blocking traffic. The Jewish extremists attacked the car 
in which the Armenians were in, you know, going home from work. And the Armenians stop the car, they get out of the car, and they're like, hey, what's your problem? We're just trying to get home from work. And uh, these Jewish extremists screamed at them and told them that this is not their country, that they need to get out because this is a Jewish nation and you are Armenian, you are not Jewish. This is racism. This is racism, everybody. It's not just anti-Christianity. It's racism. Reverse the roles. Reverse the roles. If there were Jews living in Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenians told them to leave, NATO would be saying, this is why we need the Azeris to kill off the Armenians because they're a bunch of racists. Reverse the roles. If I told a bunch of Orthodox Jews in Brooklyn to get out of America and leave to Israel, they would say that I'm anti-Semitic. And you know what? They would be right. But when it comes to racism against Armenians in Israel, not a lot of people are talking about this. Not a lot of people are speaking up on this. And for how long have we been hearing about the far right? We've been hearing about the far right in Poland, the far right in America, the far right in Britain, the far right in Germany, the far right in Hungary, the far right in Romania, the far right in Bulgaria, the far right in Russia, the far right in... (laughs) Name your country. We've been hearing about this. Not so much on the far right in Israel. And it's anti-Christian. And they say death to Christians and death to Arabs. And so the people who hate Arabs, they also hate Christians. It's not like, oh yeah, they're against the, the Arabs, you know, they're the good... No, they, all, they hate Christians. They, and but by the way, hatred toward Arabs isn't good. That's not a good thing. It's like, well, they just hate the Arabs, so they get a pass. Like, no. These are far-right lunatics, everyone. This is the far right in Israel. Now there's this whole thing about the state, specifically speaking, the Netanyahu regime in Israel, reducing the power of the Supreme Court or the highest court in Israel to basically just a symbolic institution. There's a reason for this, and this is why there has been so much turbulency in Israel. It's because... You have the orthodox lunatics in Israel, the fanatics, who want to remove the Supreme Court because they have all this influence in the Knesset, in the Israeli parliament. And so if they want to impose Jewish Sharia law, they can do it if the Supreme Court isn't there. Because when they try to impose halakhic law, the Supreme Court strikes it down. So how are they going to create their Jewish theocracy, their Jewish Sharia state, if the Supreme Court isn't there? They have to get rid of it because it's the biggest hindrance to their utopian vision of a Jewish theocratic state. An example, and this has been going on for a number of years now. Back in 2020, the Orthodox uh, Jewish political faction in Israel wanted to make it law that hospitals would have kosher police within their buildings to search the bags of visitors to see if they had any sort of non-kosher or leavened products during Passover. So let's say it's Passover and your grandfather is in the hospital, and you want to give him some dinner. You want to have a dinner with your grandpa while he's in the hospital, make him feel like he's not alone, give him some company. So you go to the hospital, and you have a bag with some bread and some sardines, some cheese, wine, whatever. The halakhic police, and for those of you who don't know, halakhic simply is a word used for Jewish law, right? Halakhic, like... You can't eat, you can't, you can't mix meat with cheese. This is, you know, not kosher. This is part of halakhic law. Or if your mother's not a Jew, but your father is a Jew, halakhically you're not Jewish, right? This is their laws. Rabbinic laws. So you go to the hospital 
And there is the kosher police waiting for you to search your bags. And they're going to search your bags and they're going to say, well, you got some bread here and it has yeast in it. This is not kosher. You can't bring this in. Sorry. Don't you know that it's Passover? You can't have leavened foods? So this is what the Orthodox political faction in Israel wanted to impose. They, they still want to impose this. And they try to get it passed in 2020. The Knesset, the, uh, the high court in Israel struck it down and said, no, if you have kosher police officers in every hospital in Israel searching people's bags for non-kosher products and God forbid something with yeast in it, that is an encroachment upon their individual autonomy. And Israel, being a secular society, does not want to uh, impose religious viewpoints on individuals because that would be a violation of their individual rights. So this really pissed off the Orthodox. And the Orthodox will, will say all sorts of things like, oh, you know, these uh, judges, they're with Christians and they're with Muslims, they hate Jews and blah, 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 blah. There was something else that happened Remember what happened back in 2020, in uh, 2021. In 2021, the Jews had, the, the Orthodox Jews had this, uh, this huge festival to uh, celebrate. And they have this festival every year where they celebrate the end of a, a plague that killed like 24,000 followers of Rabbi Akiva. So there's a very famous rabbi in Jewish history. His name is Rabbi Akiva. And he had all these thousands of students who were killed by a plague. And the plague eventually ended. So every year, the Orthodox Jews will celebrate the end of this plague. So they had this huge celebration. And they literally stampeded each other. They literally stampeded each other. And dozens and dozens of people were killed. And these people, they didn't have the self-control to, to sit there and say, wait a second, guys, we're literally trampling over our own people to death. What the hell are we doing? This is crazy. No, they just kept on going like the zebras in, in the, the Lion King. And they just kept on going and dozens upon dozens of people were killed. And instead of saying, hey, we went crazy there. We didn't uh, have any self-control. We didn't uh, think to ourselves, wait a second, you know, a little bit of introspection. Like, hey, we're literally stepping on each other. Let's stop. No, they blamed it on the Israeli government. They said it's the Israeli government's fault for some reason. So the Israeli government basically said, okay, since you're blaming us, you need a little bit of help. We're going to help you guys out. For your next big festival, you guys can't do it, right? We're, we're, we're going to cancel. In fact, we're going to prohibit your next big festival. We're not going to allow you to do it. And uh, in Israel, there is a uh, uh, another big festival that uh, that Orthodox Jews uh, will celebrate. It's the it's the festival celebrating a guy named Baba Sali. Baba Sali was a very famous Moroccan Kabbalist. Uh, they say that he had some sort of uh, power to do miracles. He was a miracle worker. He was basically a Jewish uh, wizard. And every year they celebrate this guy. He was from Morocco. He was a genius uh, with the Kabbalah. He knew spells, whatever, I don't know. And uh, he was a Jewish occultist. And so they celebrate him every year. Uh, and um, they, uh, uh, they, 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 they'll get together by the thousands. So the Israeli government said, okay, basically you guys stampeded over each other in, in your festival for uh, the plague that, uh, that ended. Uh, so we're going to help you guys out. You blamed us for it, so we're going to help you guys out. You, you guys can't celebrate Rabbi uh, uh, Baba Sali. You can't do it. You, you can't do it, right? Because you're going to stampede over, oh, you're going to kill each other again. You're going to stampede over each, over each other again. And there was a there was a uh, uh, there was a Knesset member who's an Orthodox Jew. His name is Itamar Ben Gavir, and Itamar Ben Gavir was very upset about this, and he said, oh, you allow Christians to do festivals, you allow Christians to do holidays, but you don't allow us to do our holiday. What's wrong with this picture, guys? And it's like, well, you stampeded each other to death. That's why we're canceling the next event. But they made it into this conspiracy where the government is with the Christians and not with the Orthodox Jews, and they really hate the Jews, and they're with the Christians. And So what you're seeing in Israel is the rise of 
anti-Christianity. Now, this has always been in Israel, but you're seeing it becoming more and more emboldened in that country. There's a quote that I want to read to you guys from a scholar uh, named Yiska Harani, and this is what Yiska Harani said. Yiska Harani said, There is an increase not only in numbers, but also in the daring. If in the past people would spit without being seen, now they spit openly. It is no longer something that is done in secret. So in other words, as I said earlier, the Armenian priest said that he's been spat on about 90 times so far this year. When an, a Jewish extremist wanted to spit on a Christian, he would sort of do it in a, in a, in a moment when he wasn't going to be seen by a whole lot of people. Now, according to Yiska Harani, they're doing it out in the open. They don't care how many people see them. In other words, there is no shame. They are being emboldened. They're being emboldened. And going back to the story of the Armenian young men who were in the car, and they were the two Jewish extremists who were blocking the road. Well, after that happened, you know, eventually what took place was uh, the Armenians tried to uh, the Armenians tried to explain themselves, and then one of the Jewish extremists sprayed uh, an Armenian guy with some eye irritant chemical. Well, not too long after that, about an hour after that happened, another gang of Jewish extremists popped up, and they went to the building for the Armenian Patriarchate. And, they, and on the Armenian Patriarchate, they have the flag of Armenia. Well, they were trying to climb up on the roof of the of the Armenian Christian building, and they wanted to remove the flag of Armenia. Well, a group of Armenian young men saw what was happening, and they confronted them, and the Jewish extremists ran away. And as they were running away, they were screaming, terrorist, terrorist, terrorist. So the Israeli police come up, and they hear terrorist. They point their guns at the Armenians. What does this mean? When Christians want to defend themselves against this insanity, they will be accused of being terrorist, anti-Jewish terrorist. They're no different than the Palestinians. That's, that's the type of message that they're trying to convey. So when they say death to Arabs, they also mean death to Christians. It's not just anti-Palestinian, it's also anti-Christian. And their hatred toward the Christian will also translate into literally accusing Christians of being terrorists when they're simply trying to defend their religion, their building, etc. And you are seeing the anti-Christian spirit rising up. The orthodox political faction in Israel feels very emboldened because they have this tremendous presence in the Israeli Knesset. Going back to the whole yeast, uh, um, non-kosher food and hospital uh, situation. So the Knesset struck it down. Remember what I said. They, they wanted to make this law where you have kosher police in the hospitals and they check to see if you got any yeast in your, in your bag. You, you got any uh, leavened bread in your bag, any non-kosher food products in your bag. The, the, the Israeli high court struck that down, thankfully. And that was back in, uh, that was back in uh, 2020. And then in 2021, they uh, requested that the High Court of Israel do a rehearing for the proposal of having this, this law imposed. And the High Court said, no, there's no point of having a, re a, a rehearing. That's it. It's over. It's been struck down. Well, not too long ago, the Knesset passed this bill saying that hospitals can now have kosher police. This is why they want to remove the high court, because they know that the high court will strike it down. They can't have their halakhic law being imposed, their rabbinic Judaic law being imposed if you have the high court there, the, the Supreme Court of Israel there. This is why Netanyahu and his ilk want to get, get rid of it. Well, the Orthodox got so emboldened that they recently tried to pass a law which would put people in prison for preaching Christ. 
And the law stipulates that if you preach Christ to an adult, you'll be put in prison for one year. If you preach Christ to a minor, you will be put in prison for two years. Nanyahu struck it down. Why? Nanyahu says that he will, that as long as he is in power, he will not allow any sort of uh, attack on Christianity to take place. He will not allow any sort of law against Christianity to be imposed. I, and you have evangelical Christians on the internet saying, this is great. You see, Nanyahu loves Christians. I disagree. I think Nanyahu is just a lot more intelligent. He's a lot more intelligent than, than these extremists. What he's basically saying is that now is not the time. Now is not the time. Start with the little things. Start with something simple like un, like leavened bread not being allowed in a hospital during Passover. Something small like yeast, right? Let's, let's have a war on yeast. Not a war on Christianity, a war on yeast. And then once we start getting more and more power, then we can start proposing anti-Christian laws. Not Yahoo is no friend to Christians. Let's be real here. The guy supports Sodom. And he has, as his gang, these Jewish extremists. If he's so pro-Christian, why does he have in, uh, in his circle these anti-Christian lunatics? Why is he friends with these Jewish extremists, these Orthodox Jewish fanatics? Why? If he's so pro-Christian. He's not pro-Christian. He's simply a lot more conniving, and he's simply waiting for the right moment to enact and propose uh, anti-Christian legislation. And this brings me back to what Jesus warned us about. Jesus warned the disciples that they will take you to the synagogues, they will persecute you in the synagogues. And he talks about how the synagogue will persecute the church. Now, I thought that that was already fulfilled in the time of the early church, when St. Paul was alive, when St. Paul and and the other uh, earliest Christians were being persecuted by the synagogue. I thought that was over, right? Because, you know, synagogues aren't killing Christians. Now, looking at what's happening in Israel, how, how you see all this political turbulency, how you see the Orthodox trying to make Israel into a theocracy, I believe that this is going to be further fulfilled, further fulfilled in the future, and that we're going to be seeing way more persecution in Israel, and that it's going to become more and more openly done by the fanatics. You have... Israelis who are secularists, who don't want this nonsense, and God bless them, those people are deemed as enemies by the extremists. So it's not just Jew versus Christian, it's Jew versus Jewish people who are decent, who don't want this nonsense. Kind of like the KLA in Kosovo murdered a lot of Albanians because they wanted no part in their thuggery and in their anti-Serb fanaticism. There are plenty of Israelis and I would argue that probably the majority of Israelis want none of this nonsense. But the orthodox political faction is big enough and strong enough to be dangerous. And so Israel is in a state where it's so polarized. It's such a divided society that I believe that in the future, Israel is going to have a civil war, just like it did in the time of Josephus. It wasn't just the Jews fighting the Romans in ancient times. And we talk about Masada and all this. And you know, it's we, we speak of the Roman Jewish War as if it was just Jews versus Romans. And for the most part, it was literally Jews killing Jews. It was Jews fighting Jews. The Jews who said, Hey, we have no issue with Rome, let's not have a war with the Romans. And it was the Jews who wanted a war with Rome. And they were the, the violence was horrendous. The violence that was done by the anti-Jewish faction against the people who were really indifferent to Rome was absolutely horrendous. Jews who were pro-Rome were butchered. They were massacred by the thousands. People, these fanatics would literally go door to door and murder their fellow Jews. And I think that such an historical reality could actually manifest itself again, because Israel is such a polarized society, and you have these fanatics who hate Christians and they hate Palestinians, and then you have the Israelis who are decent people and they say, we have no problem with Christians, we have no problem with uh, with Palestinians. And so the fanatics are going to are going to tell the the uh, the regular Israelis that they are traitors and that they hate Jews and that they're they're with Jesus. And I wouldn't doubt that this is going to be a time in which you will see 
uh, uh, significant conversions from Judaism or from atheism, because a lot of these Israelis are atheists, to Christianity. I wouldn't doubt that this will happen in the future. The future is going to be so shocking, guys. We think it's all just going to be Jew versus Arab, and I think that's all wrong. I think in the future, yes, you're going to be seeing Jew versus Palestinian, but it's also going to be Jew versus Jew, and you are already seeing the polarization really, really spring out in front of our eyes. You're already seeing the manifestation of this rage and this animosity between Jews really, really show itself. And you're seeing this viciousness against Christians, against Armenians, just boldly showing itself, boldly presenting itself, exposing itself. It's right there, guys. It's right there. <sighs> and that hatred, that hatred is, is so disturbing. And it's that very hatred that was expressed on Mount Golgotha when Jesus, the Messiah of the Jews, was nailed onto a cross and the Jews said, if he is really the Messiah, then let him free himself. Let him save himself. He, he, he said that he was the Messiah. Let him save himself. That very hatred that screams, crucify him, crucify him. That very hatred that wanted to put St. Paul to death, it's still alive. That very hatred that rejected the Logos, the wisdom of God. St. Paul calls, calls Jesus Christ the wisdom of God. He is the mind of God. He is the, the thought of God. In the beginning was the word. In, in the beginning was the Logos. In the beginning was the thought of God. The very hatred that rejected the thought of God is still amongst us. And that rejection of the Logos, that rejection of thought, that rejection of God's wisdom has led to this chaos that we see, this, this insanity that we see. Anyway, you guys just heard some Theo Lodgy. God bless. <laughs>